Taken me back twenty years, twenty long years, till the new went away. Went away to become a lawyer. And now you are a lawyer, a great lawyer, a successful lawyer. And you've come back home at last to see old mother. Oh, oh my boy, you've made me. But I'm forgetting everything. But come into the front room, John. The same front room, but with a little new furniture that you used to play in. Oh, stand where you are a moment, John. Let me look at you. Let me try to realize that it is you, grown into a great man, a successful, well-dressed man, and you are still my son. Oh, how handsome you are. The answer to your mother's prayer. Oh, but I'm forgetting Rena, your sister. The little sister you left behind when you went away. Oh, Rena. Don't run away, my dear. Come on down and meet your brother. It's John, dear. He's come back home to see her. Well, you don't have to dress to meet your brother. He'll understand. Won't you, John? Why, of course I will, Mother. It is midnight time. All good people should be dressed for bed. I'll make her come on down, just as she is. You hear him? Your brother, dear. He's a great man and pretty. Come on down. Tell him how to and be sweet. Pretty girl, Rita. Thank you. How old are you now? Twenty-two. 
I was two years old when you went away. Ah, but isn't she sweet, Mother? Just as sweet as sugar. And she's a good girl, too, John. She makes your mother very happy. That's wonderful. Not mad. Oh, no. What's the matter, John? Is there something wrong? No, no, there's nothing wrong, no. I just happened to think of something. Something I must speak of with you. Alone. Then, then you'll excuse me. I'll run upstairs and... See us in the morning. That'll be fine, dear. I just got a nice night. What is it, John? Why did you change so quickly? Have you heard something already? Yes, Mother. I have heard something already on the street this afternoon. Say that. That pleases me greatly. It means that I can put my plans into action at once and not waste two or three years trying to make a lady of her. From what stage she's already with. Now, here are my plans to put an end to this impossible lady. We have got to get her from Thayer. Or else. Now, my dear, what is this terrible something you open? I can't imagine what it is. I've been puzzling over it. I never couldn't guess what it was, dear. So I didn't go into any details in the note, as it was too much, and nothing but to see me. I'll tell you all about it, just as I said. But I am. I see. First, did you and your father have any discussion regarding me on the street yesterday? Well, yes, we did. But I saw you. You don't have to assure me anything, Frank, dear. Just let me see. Then you'll understand that I haven't talked about anything. <laughs> I don't see Frank Fowler here tonight. I wonder what has happened. He's with Rena Walden. Oh, and Myrtle Dennis is in town. And I've got plenty of gossip to spread. Wait until this dance is over. And that's all I can see. And I'll entertain my guests with a story. A story of the Walden family. <laughs> <laughs> You will understand, Mother, when I explain that for 20 years I have been known as John Wallace, that it was necessary to change my name to escape any capable connections with my youth. I understand, John. You are a great man. And you know what is best for yourself, for me. And for me. Of course. And that is, as I overheard it last night. I see. I'm so tired I take such a view. 
It seems we could all be so much happier if they would be just willing to meet us halfway. But life is like that. People could all be alike and feel alike. There'd be no politics, no race prejudice. How even tempered you are, Frank. You have every reason to be violently angry and swirling, and yet you are as calm and considerate as a trained diplomat. What you've told me calls for calm deliberation and consideration, Nina. I love you. You love me. You've been kind and obedient to your mother all your life. You've never contraried her, contraried me. You've just been good and kind and wonderful to everybody. And now at the time when you have every reason to look to those you love for happiness and your reward, you're suddenly confronted with a problem you hadn't even dreamed of. Forced to choose between your mother and brother on the one hand, and the man you love on the other. Oh, Frank, you're wonderful. But rest assured, that however in between whom I'm compelled to choose, they can never stop me from loving you. Fine and noble, dear. Now, with regard to your brother and his whispered conversation with your mother that you could not hear, I venture that I can guess the import out. She's in the city. He's going to sing for you. She was being gossiping by dog. He's sort of an Alexander at the piano. Madam me.
darling, how could I have misunderstood you? But I don't want to leave you. What will I do if I can't see you? Will you come to see me? No, no, Rita. I couldn't do that. But don't take me like you did. Plenty to go through it before this thing is over. But, Plenty. But what will you be doing while, while all this is going on? Ah, at last you've come to what I've been trying to explain. I shall be very busy, Rita, my dear. Very busy. Oh, dear. This is so bewildering. Tell me something. Please explain. That I will, my Rita. And how? Now, here's what I'll be doing. Now, that she is capable of all the responsibilities of a lady, I would into society, and to the man it would please me for her to fall in love with and marry. Now, you see, it's right there. All the court has been honest. Some of the white people to encourage us have been telling us that we have made the most wonderful progress of any race in the world in the years since we have been free. Result? Three years. Permitted the grass to grow under our feet. We wake up now to find ourselves almost lost in the shuffle and holding the bag on all sides. Hands have changed. And it's up to the Negro race now to individualize his efforts. By which I mean that each and every one of us must make concerted drive towards success along the many individual lines that offer consequences. You have given me some money. The bank has loaned me some more than dollars. And by the time your brother has begun to build you up in society over there, Frank Fowler hopes to be well on the great success as one of the leading builders and contractors of Fayetteville. My friend. So that's my story, Rena. By the time your brother's conquest for you of the other side has ended, I hope to head a firm that will be laying time on the doors in the state of North Carolina. A monument to honesty and determined effort. And you'll succeed, Bill. I know you will. But I don't see why I can't stay here to help you. I want to be drugged away to attempt to help And another thing, I won't be altogether happy leave you to the temptations of a certain person I know. Now, now, Rita. Let's forget all about my brother's sin and find a minister and be married tonight. Tempting me again? But think how much happiness we will have had before it's all over. Oh, Frank. That time, most time, you seem straight, and I find it hard to understand you. I, I'm sorry. What? I, I don't know. It's, it's just my way, I suppose. Oh, you're enchanted. Don't you believe it is beautiful? Will you dance? <laughs> You're the most wonderful girl I've ever met, and I love you. You, you mustn't talk that way. Why not? You don't know what you are saying. I know fully, and repeat, that you're wonderful, beautiful. Why not? Because I, I don't want you to. Oh, you're insane. The end of my life, dream. I love you. No, no. Oh, hello, George. Oh, hello, John. Uh, pardon me if I have intruded, but you seem a bit upset. What's the matter? I, I really don't know. Rita and I were dancing. For the first time to hold it in my arms. 
And I have loved her since the first day I met her. And I have intended telling her so. So just now, as I held her close and we danced, I told her. And asked her to become my wife. And she screamed out as one frightened and ran away. I, I don't quite understand. Oh, my dear fellow. After all your experience with the opposite sex, you stand here and talk like a chump. Why? What do you mean? Just what I say. You not only talk like one, but you act like one. Can't you understand that Rena has never had a bow? That your passion and words are all fighting her? What did you expect a modest, obedient, and retiring girl like her to do? I am a chump. And a fool. Why, the dear little thing, I'll speak to her myself. And everything will be all right. I know her, you see. An angel from hell, if there is such a thing. And if you're sure, John, that I am anxious for Rena's name, the happiest day of my life, our wedding day. I would say God to that, John. Have you considered, for instance, uh, your mother? Are you sure that she would approve of a bride that she knows not all about and has never seen? Now, let's sit down and talk this thing over. <coughs> Girls like her are born, not trained. Her mother must have been a wonderful woman. Tell me all about her. Now, with regard to that, George, I feel that you ought to know that my sister and I have not been old family, a rich family or a senior. That she can bring in nothing but herself. We have no relatives or connections to whom we would be proud to introduce. We ought to be brief, neutral. But if a man is noble and brave and strong, and if a woman is beautiful and good and true, what else matters? Now, it makes me happy to hear you talk like that, George. Oh, ancestor, ancestor, indeed, for I I'll tell you a family secret, John, to prove how little I care about ancestors. My maternal great great grandfather, 150 years ago, over time, gone and fought the Indian cattle across the Scottish border. How is that the pity for me? Behold in me the lineal descendant of a pair of That's good, George. <laughs>
motherless. It is said most black. He's that terrible one about our mother. The chances are he's well, happy, and carefree as a fish. Oh, there's so much heaven. If I can go to the telephone, pull up and find out. Then you are telephonized to him, but I... Oh, Rena, don't break down like this. I can't help it. I'm miserable, John. Miserable. Oh, Rena, Rena, please hush. The servants might hear you. I can't help it, they do. I want to see my mom. This is the third time I've experienced this terrible thing. I'm heartbroken. Oh, mom, mom, please. Rena, will you please hush? You don't realize what you're saying. I'm trying to be strong, Jackie, for the best. But Mom and I have been capable companions all of my life. And I'm afraid so that I'm guilty. Sometimes I feel that I'll just die. Honestly, I don't know what I will do. Why, we could call her the nurse. Why, the cook. Or, oh, yes, the housekeeper. Yes. Bring her here. Call her what you like. And how long would it be before some relatives from Fayetteville or Sampson County met her on the street, wrote her a letter, done something to expose us all, to spread the news throughout the whole county, that John Wallach and his beautiful sister engaged to marry George Sion, wealthy Sion of the Old South, had Negro blood in their veins. Great heavens, woman, do you want to lead us to an arsenal, cut a man to it, and then expect to go on living? Oh, no, 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 John. I would rather suffer and die a thousand deaths for this to build up during all these years. I understand now. Now let's forget about Mama, myself. Think of you, your career. Oh, I'm so sorry, brother. But from now on, I'll suffer alone. I'll not jeopardize you. Believe that, John. I'll go on. You know, I got a suspicion. Yeah? Yes. Now listen. It is a source of constant worry for me. I've taken an awful risk, but thus far I feel that I have succeeded. That is, as far as my efforts are concerned. I've placed you into society. Every girl in the town envies you. Why, you've landed the greatest catch in the whole. You have everything that the richest girls in South Carolina want and crave. Still, as I have said, way deep down in your heart. You're still passionately in love with cold black Negro in North Carolina. Honey, you fly to him this minute. I can't understand. But now try to explain, John. When Judge Strait sent you away to school as a white boy, you were young and unburdened, and no environment has settled upon you and shaped you for another life as it has me. You grew up and went to school as a white boy, so that by the time you were old enough to go with girls, you had forgotten your childhood days sufficiently to feel at home. It wasn't a case of being suddenly picked up and placed in a new and strenuous environment as you have placed me. All this frightens me. I'm afraid to talk, to smile, to do anything, for fear that I'll make a mistake and embarrass. How does God have the triumph that you are so interested in? I imagine he is wonderful. But oh, John. I, I've never known men like him. I'm afraid to, I don't know what to do, or what to say, or how to do. All this upsets me. I am not vain, but, but I find it so, so hard to talk to you. And then another thing, always while in the presence of these people, Mr. Tryon and all the rest, I am constantly thinking of who I am and who they are. And how they would hate me and despise me if they knew the truth. How they would scorn and look at me and point their fingers at me and call me that unspeakable name, John. Oh, oh. Rena, Rena. There. I knew she didn't want to leave her people. It's that brother who's making her do this. A poor little mother. Sister, where on earth are you drifting to? God knows where, John. I only know that I am not a white girl, but a Negress. And happy and sorry as only I know that to be. I know I could go on telling their joy, their sorrow, their poverty, their, their everything. You're coming back to fight again. Yes. Wherever my mind wanders, it always goes back to me. To fight. To me, he is manly. So fight. So honest. So truthful. You are thinking of him. Only as one of us. Us? 
Yes, sir. For I receive. I am one of them, and I believe in faith. Oh, Rena, Rena. Oh, I just like to be truthful and frank and honest. And that is what I mean about him. He said to me, yes. that is how kind he is. But I was ready and offered the first time in my life to disobey mom and marry him in spite of her, of you. But he wouldn't let me. He wouldn't have me. He made me come on. He forced me to come on and see it through. But why, Rena? Because he is a man, John. Willing to sacrifice what is more dear to him than his own life, his own soul. And that is why I love him so. I, I hope you understand, dear. Oh, Rena, you're nervous enough to say. Go and lie down. I'll get you out, will you? Gonna meet her sugar daddy now, and I'm betting two to one that she don't come back. Honey, when they once lost the state, ain't nobody can take them away from you. Mm -hmm. And I bet he's a dark one, too. <laughs> well, suppose we go on to their freedom by having a grand good time. Right. Hey, piano too. Come over. Let's have some fun. This water is gone. Check this. Oh, right. hey. What are you going to sing for tonight? Well, people stay away from my door. I'm sure. You keep going your way. I'll keep going my way. River. Away from my door. I just got a cabin. You don't need my cabin. Come on, my wife, of my son. Come on, baby, I'm the one of those. Keep my bed and my fire. That's all I want. I break in your heart. Don't start dragging for her. River, take away from my door. Now you keep going your way. I'll oh, keep going my way. River, take away from my door. 
Okay. Hey! Well, that's that. Let's get to work, folks. Come on, let's go. So long. So long. See you. See you. Oh, thanks. You don't know how I've missed you. Every day, every hour in the day, I've thought of you, longed for you, cried for you. Honestly, Frank, I would rather suffer death a hundred times than to even attempt to go on with this thing. I'm supposed to go back, but I'm, I've had enough. I'm afraid I'm through. I, I feel that I, I'm leaving my brother's house for good. Now listen, Lena. I didn't want to prolong our conversation over the phone. But I want you to understand that I didn't come to influence you. You're not influencing me in the least, Frank. I'm simply tired of being a liar in a suit. And I want to get away from it for a while. If not for all, have a mom and rest. Oh, Frank, you can't imagine what an ordeal I've been through. I'm sorry. A liar in a suit, that's all. But your brother, surely he knows best. Yes, my brother. He thinks he knows what is best. That's why I'm here. That's why I tried to stick it out. But I can't. I can't stand it much longer. I'll break on this thing. Something has got to happen. Oh, merciful Father, forgive me, forgive me. Be calm, my dear. Be calm. I'm sure it's not as bad as all that. No. But come, Frank. I must think of my mother. She did me. Yes, Rena. Mother needs you. Drive me on to Fayetteville, dear. When we get there, we'll cheer Mom up and then go straight to a minister. Kiss me, Frank. Don't awaken me till we reach Fayetteville, dear. Thank you.